Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guests today are Mike Malaret. He's the Director of Sales Engineering for Veritas Federal. Prem Jadwani is the Chief Technology Officer for Government Acquisitions, Inc. And Kurt Steege is the Chief Technology Officer of Thundercat Technology. Good to have you all with us. And Prem, we're gonna start with you and talk about some of the cybersecurity best practices, particularly in this age of ransomware. And because so much ransomware threat comes via phishing, comes via email. It is really a matter of everyone in the organization to be aware of this. So what, are, what do employees need to know and how do you get them the knowledge they need to be able to be your first line of defense against those ransomware vectors? Thank you, Tom. The, it is my pleasure and I'm delighted to be on this panel. So yes, absolutely. I mean, ransomware has been one of the biggest threat uh, that has uh, plagued the industry this year in 2021. And it has started like three, four years ago. And just, I was reading some data points that in the first half of 2021, they, there was 151% increase in the threats of ransomware. And now the alarming statistic is there is a ransomware attack every 11 seconds that is happening. So it is really, I would call it, we are in a cyber pandemic with this kind of cyber threat. So to talk about best practices, I think the customers have to start with some of the basic cyber hygiene. I mean, if you look at the ransomware attacks, they are mostly originated because of phishing attacks, social engineering to the employees, uh, the employees who are not paying attention, they are opening attachments that they should not. And what happens as a result of that, there is a malware that downloads on the machine and the machine gets encrypted and now they are required to pay the ransom. So to answer the question about what are the best practices, first thing is the employees need to know that they need to be vigilant with all this uh, phishing campaigns that are out there. If you see an email that you don't recognize, if you see an attachment that doesn't make sense, don't touch it. And there is a cyber awareness training that needs to happen on a regular basis within the government agencies. Second thing is, I would say the operating systems and applications have to be patched. And most of the uh, ransomware attacks happen when there is a legacy systems in place that have not been updated, not been patched. So that's uh, another area to look at. Also, I would also recommend doing some kind of uh, principle of least privilege that needs to be enforced. So when this malware does come on the machine, uh, it cannot auto implement, it cannot auto inject itself. There has to be a user intervention. So the systems have to be properly hardened. They have to be locked down and uh, not all ransomware attacks can be prevented. I mean, there is a misnomer in the industry. There are customers who feel we have hardened all the systems. Sure. Uh, we are bulletproof, but unfortunately uh, that is not true. So you need to have a good, fantastic backup strategy. Got it. It sounds like you really need a playbook for operations. And that playbook starts with that employee training. And I imagine that has to happen regularly, not just kind of once set and forget, because the social engineering techniques keep morphing. And, you know, they're getting better and better, too, aren't they? Absolutely. You know, the playbook has to be in place and playbook has to be uh, continuously updated as the threat landscape changes. All right. And the ransomware attackers, they want one of two things, or maybe both. They want your data or they want your money to give you your data back. And so one way or another, it comes around to the data as the central asset that's in play here before they get to the bank. So what are some of the data practices that might be overlooked or might need to be updated such that should an attack be successful and a computer become infected, that doesn't necessarily mean your data has to become hostage. Absolutely. So I would say data is the new oil, right? They are all about locking up your system so you can get to your business as usual. Or if you're a government agency, your mission is impacted. So, and as a result, they put urgency on it and say, look, you want your data back. You need to pay the ransom or we are going, you got 24 hours, right? So the, the, the data practices that, Need to that are overlooked are basically again going back to some of the cyber hygiene. Right, first thing I would say is the agencies need to have a three to one backup strategy. Back the reliable backup, protected backup, continuous backup is so important. I mean, this is the lifeline 
of the data is the lifeline of the agency. So what three to one backup strategy means, you need to have three copies of the data on two different media and one should be offsite. I mean, I see a lot of uh, best practices of customers who have taken an offsite backup, not just cloud backup. You need to physically have a backup in an offsite unconnected network. So if you do experience a ransomware, you are not at the mercy of having to pay the ransom, but you can quickly go to your clean backup. And these have been tested before and you can get your data back. So that is really top of the mind. That can be a huge advantage to the customers who have uh, been impacted with ransomware and they don't have to pay that kind of crazy money that is in millions of dollars. And also I would say uh, patch the operating systems on time, make sure you know where your data is, identify inventory or assets and know your RTO, RPO, recovery time objective, recovery point objective. I mean, again, this, I would call it as basic cyber hygiene that we learned in 101. It is not something complex. And there are customers who are getting some of those best data practices in place and they get impacted with ransomware, but they don't have to pay that ransom and they still are okay. So sure. that's my recommendation. And very quickly, then your RTO and RPO can vary depending on the criticality of the data so that you don't have to have the most expensive options for all of the data, but kind of have a priority in place system. Absolutely. RTO, RPO is the first thing you start with because every customer's mission is different. And how much time do you have to recover before you can get before your mission gets impacted? How much volume of data? would you be able to afford to lose? And that drives all your backup strategy. So, and that drives all your uh, defense in depth strategy. It, def it defines your uh, uh, recovery strategy. I mean, everything starts with RTO, RPO, and that is the, the uh, turning point from which you can have a very effective leverage. Uh, when you do get impacted with ransomware, you have right controls in place. All right, some good advice from Prem Jadwani, the Chief Technology Officer for Government Acquisitions, Inc. My other guests today are Mike Malaret. He's the Director of Sales Engineering at Veritas Federal. Next, we'll hear from Kurt Steege, the Chief Technology Officer of Thundercat Technology. I'm Tom Temin here on Federal Insights, going beyond data protection, sponsored by Veritas here on Federal News Network. <laughs> 